So <laughs> recently, speaking of prehistoric, recently Freya Allen, who starred in The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, did an interview for the movie in which she said that really she is team ape in real life. Although her character is team human, she is team ape because humanity is evil and humans are destroying the planet. And then, everybody and then everybody claps. It's yes. so ridiculous. And it's unbelievably predictable. But it's like the same thing you happened when it. the Avatar sequel this? came out. And I said, this is sinister because the message of this movie is that humanity is evil and we don't have a right to have you know, a place to live. How can one be of the opinion that humanity does not deserve to exist and at the same time be of the opinion that humanity or that humans don't deserve to suffer or that humans don't deserve like if you don't deserve to exist at all if if, if human beings as a whole don't oh, deserve to exist why is why is is their suffering even something to notice mm. well if, if they if they're if they're not worthy of 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 preserving their lives then why is their happiness of of any consequence there is no reason for their happiness because you're you're saying that murdering them is a good thing if you think their deaths are good then their lives are inconsequential and that means that their suffering is inconsequential as well this well, she is was, monstrous <laughs> thoughts she was right that her character in the movie is pro-human not pro-ape but she does temporarily team up with the apes and well, the i point. thought humans like, are duplicitous what, what annoyed me about her character is that she didn't go far enough like she didn't backstab them or betray them really and she didn't commit to it and she was like maybe we can coexist here's, after all here's where it goes for this she goes i mean look at the planet oh here we go she said realizing that she was straying into controversial territory with her anti-human comments look at what humans have done to the earth she well, interjected she, she started off saying um that Although her character is pro-human, she insists, I'm team ape. Obviously, when I'm playing May, I'm team human, but Freya is team ape. Listen, before humans... I dislike humans a lot. Like, she actually said that. That's before so humans, dumb. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. There was not, so a, single, dumb. There was not a single talk wow. about before humans. She said, I mean, there are, you know, times where you see humans come together and you go, oh, isn't this lovely? But then there's times where you go, I absolutely hate us. This is... It is... This is so stupid. But she doesn't mean it. It's like an it's empty same, platitude. It's the same yeah. fake deepness oh, so of dumb. so many of the atheists, right? Which yes. is that, uh, and in Hollywood, fake deep, This of all the fakest, deepest quotes, this is the fakest because what they love is the nihilism of anti-humanism. It's one of their favorite storylines to go through. They discount all of the amazing things that human beings have created, everything that we've done to, uh, to bring people up out of poverty, all of the things that humanity has created that make her life possible are discounted because she read some articles on Slate or Salon <laughs> that said that the environment is getting destroyed. It's just kind of wild that they can't do a single interview without doing this. Yeah. You know? You know, that's a great point, Brett, because the biggest cope in the universe is simulation theory. Because simulation theory is the admission that of God without saying God. It's God with ner it's God for nerds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're just a dork? Okay. No, it's the simulator. Yeah. Oh, God? <laughs> The guy that created the simulation. You mean it's, the universe? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, and and this these in Mary, it's really interesting you pointed it out because like I think this actually speaks to why I think good stories get them out of the get them out of trouble so often. I liked Avatar, so I was willing to give it more credit. Whereas I did not like this apes movie, so it's you didn't more like it enough to excuse it of its anti-human message, but I Correct. definitely noticed it. But, okay, but and there was an anti-white theme to it as well. Yeah. But also, but I also felt that there was a strong family theme in Avatar that I was okay with. That kind of balanced it out mm. for me, at least a little bit. But in this, it's like I didn't Look. like the movie. I didn't find it engaging, and so the and, and this is what a lot of these Planet of the Apes boil down to is that human beings are duplicitous, we're a scourge on the planet, blah 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 blah. Well, <clears throat> it's also like blamed on humans in the Planet of the Apes for like why they lost their intellect in the first place. Did we miss a twenty dollars yes. super chat? Sorry, let me look for that. I got Josh it. Fields. Yep. Just started adding PCC to my daily list of podcasts while I drive all over the countryside Let's in go. Iowa delivering cardboard boxes. I'm a UPS driver. Congrats on two years. Keep on being awesome. Thank you. Let's Cheers. go. Thank you. That's awesome. We plan on it. Thank um, you. But 
also in in Avatar, they first off have a climate message because the reason why humans are colonizing the um, the Navi are because they have made the planet they have made Earth uninhabitable and are you know doing space colonization to to escape. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we don't deserve a place to live because we're um, we're using gas stoves and we um, you know buy too many clothing items. We use too much plastic, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. We don't deserve to exist because of that. You know what mm -hmm. I realized? I, I realized I think this is why I loved the show Person of Interest so much. And I'll give you like a little bit of, a, of an explanation why. In the, in the show, in the final two seasons, it's basically a face-off between the machine and Samaritan. And the machine is an artificial intelligence that's been designed with human ethics by its creator. And, the, and Samaritan is a, a pure AI that has no human ethics or sentiments. Isn't it the other way around? No, the machine is the good one. The machine is the one that has human ethics. Oh, Samaritan oh, okay. does not. And, uh, and basically what it comes down to is when Finch created the machine, he wouldn't allow the government to use it directly. They had to get basically the machine to deliver them a social security number and then human beings would have to go investigate these crimes because he always wanted a human element to be involved in the process because if it's just a machine making decisions, it's bad for humanity. And when it comes down to the final storyline, Samaritan is basically what happens if you allow AI to rule the world inherently as a computer, the machine always requires a human element. And the point is they destroy them both so that human beings go back to making decisions for themselves because the tyranny of AI is not something that humanity will be able to survive. And the whole point of the bad guy, and the great thing in that show is John Greer is a character who is a human working for Samaritan and wholeheartedly believes that human beings have destroyed the planet. He says, we need this creation to fix the damage that we've done, or if it's too bad, get us to another planet. But he's not portrayed as the good guy. He's portrayed as a bad guy with understandable motives. Mm -hmm. He ends up, uh, spoiler <laughs> alert if you haven't seen the show, he ends up letting his own AI kill him to further the causes because he believes in it so heavily. Mm -hmm. But the message of the show is very, very pro-human. Um, I, I often wonder what was the point where actors kind of went their own way with the script. Because when I was growing up in the early, mid-90s, I remember that it was kind of... Um, I love working in this production. Thank you so much to my director. Um, this is my character. This is my character's characteristics, which was difficult to me because I am X. However, I do identify with this central theme. And it was all kind of a, like a little script to give you some inkling about the character and create some intrigue about it. Mm -hmm. But now... I feel like it's the complete. Let me opposite. just like commandeer this as my platform. Yeah. Yeah. For now it's all it is about that's them. On my mind today. It's like, well, actually, yeah. my character's wrong, <laughs> and I'm super based. <laughs> yeah, actually, I hate my character. And I, I and, I, and I don't get it because how? Okay. Well, she did literally say that she hates her character by virtue of being human. She goes, but I no. dislike she, humans yeah. a lot. Yeah. Shane Wilder sent us a twenty dollar. Disliking humans is genuine evil. All of humanity's history has been to try to better mankind. Does it fail? Oftentimes, yes. In general, people want to help people. I love animals, but will pick a human life over an animal. Wait, you mean that if there was a, a house and it was burning down and there was a dog and a stranger? Another one of those stupid questions that's designed to make people on the internet I would argue. save my dog If there was like a, a dog and a human in a house that was burning right next to a woods where there was a man and a bear, which one would you pick? I don't know. I'd choose like maybe the man and the dog, but not the man and the I bear. Just, I, I don't know. I am strongly feeling like Alex Jones in that clip where he's like talking about Brian Stelter and he's saying like, he is evil. <laughs> like I'm literally, <laughs> I feel like that right now. A lot of dogs right are more now. human than humans. But I, but when I when I hear her say this, I don't hear evil. I hear I think I'm deep because I yes. I hate humanity. Well, it's of not, it's yeah. the most shallow. It's the same, and and not to insult the the atheists as a whole, given that I'm an agnostic. But it's it's what the internet atheist movement was in in the early 2010s that just kind of grew into a lot of anti-humanism. Mm -hmm. You know, Man. I mean, I think that this has been like on my mind for the last few days that climate change propaganda or sorry propaganda is um it's actually just new a new form of paganism um because they they worship nature and they believe that human sacrifices will like genuinely sacrificing human lives will bring us the good favor of of mother nature yeah 
and craziness. that's <clears throat> the message underneath it all really because it's it's not based in reality like there are no I mean, there are manipulated statistics but the statistics really don't support the outcomes that they're pushing for um it's really kind of just a religion of of nature worship I'll never understand the and look I see a lot of this on the internet as a whole it's it's big on Instagram too like anti-humanism it's the pessimism towards the human condition that yeah. that person that <laughs> you showed me their their Instagram story is just constant I do have negativity a, I do have a self-hate. friend who is just his Instagram and I, I I love the dude to death he's a good dude but in general it's the type of thing where when you see it you could not like if if, if but he's not like that necessarily in real life so sure. it's like if his real life sentiment was like his Instagram stories you would never be able to spend more than 10 minutes with them because everything that they post is unbelievably cynical and in nihilistic mm-hmm. and I, I've just never understood that it doesn't make sense to me mm. so he needs a wellness check uh, but but a lot of it is like, look, the, the doomerism that they've been filled with comes on from all fronts, right? It comes from the news. It comes from uh, who they follow on social media and all of it done okay. th- for activist causes, which is even worse. This is a famous wealthy actress. Yes. What exactly is so horrific about the reality of her life? I think it's... She, because she read a climate change article on Salon. I don't, I don't even think it's like that. I think it's truly childlike, this kind of reaction, because... I feel like this mythology, like human bad nature by itself, actually good, is not only misguided, it's not factual, like even remotely, you know, like the wilderness is a savage. But this savage is done, place. this is done yes. on both sides to, uh, uh, to kind of dehumanize people and to demoralize you. So anytime you see some stupid video of some person saying, remember the video the other day of the woman who was saying like, um, or, or no, like let, let's talk about the, the politician eating his own crap that you were talking about. Mm. And then you see that stuff and people like bring on the asteroid. It's designed yeah. to make you angry. I've been humanity. guilty of that. But it's if, designed to do that. If I Don't can, let it. If I can finish my point. So I think that this comes from a place where a lot of people, <clears> when they interact with someone that they don't necessarily know, it's kind of, tepid platitudes is like oh lovely weather that we're having something something and i feel that this is a signaling to other people who don't want to come off as tepid and who truly now try to psychoanalyze it like don't understand why sometimes we have surface conversations with strangers Mm -hmm. it's actually quite evolved for us to be it's very useful yeah it's useful it's kind you know it's not savage and they're i feel like they're kind of signaling to other people like oh i'm an individual because i held these beliefs that everyone has which is odd i don't know yeah. i'm really struggling it's to... a form of like so the weather airline food. <laughs> it's their version of so the weather it's it's like yes. oh d- this guy's talking about the weather i know the weather I- is bad because republicans <laughs> want I, I, I to be friends the, you know the other example it's uh as much as we love pets Right. It's the people who talk about <laughs> pets online that despise you that say, like, we need pets more than humans because. Go, OK, no, go, 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 so go, go. so there's a lot of people. <laughs> it's like uh, your, your dog loves you. Your dog loves you unconditionally. That's great. And they're like, this is why uh, dogs are better than than humans. Why would you need uh, why would you need to have a kid when you can just have uh, when you can just have a pet? All of these things. That is anti-human and it's sentiment yes. to me. It's anti-human. And and I, I feel like. It's ridiculous to think that it's acceptable to be anti all humans, but it's not acceptable to be like anti some humans, right? Like it's it's like yeah. oh, if you hate everybody and want to kill all of humans, then it's that's okay. Fine. We can make believe that it's that <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's acceptable. But if you're like if you're genocidal to one group of people, that's <laughs> completely beyond the pale. Mm-hmm. Like why is like it's right. beyond the pale to be genocidal yeah. or to look for the 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 annihilation of human beings. And in in its entirety, like just that concept. Well, it's like is, the difference between a crime and a hate crime, basically. No, but you're, you're like even <laughs> further beyond. Yeah, what you're, you're like, saying. like you. Uh. It's re, it's ridiculous that, and it's ridiculous that that doesn't like compute with people. It doesn't yeah. register that they're like I'm I'm comfortable with being like. It's like more loving to collectively hate. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's totally ridiculous. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.